morning, T.D. Bob here. <clears throat> we're looking at Doi Suta, the mountain behind me, and we're in Chiang Mai, Thailand. Today I'd like to talk to you about the band Chicago. Chicago has a special place in my memory. I've worked with over a hundred bands at one capacity or another, and yet just by personality, friendliness, and accessibility, they were at the top of my list as far as just being great guys. They were at crew meal every night and there was a lively exchange with them and they were good people. I'll give you an example. <clears throat> they had, I did the 17th album tour, Chicago 17, and at the end of that tour, a guy named Bear, who had been one of their backline crew since the beginning, decided it was time for him to retire. Now the back line crew is, there's an amplifier line behind the band that they play their instruments through. The band roadies or band stage crew, roadie is a dirty word for stage crew and technicians, those guys set up the drums or the amplifiers or the keyboards or whatever. And Bear would been with them from the beginning. When he retired, the band bought him a dump truck, a backhoe, and a trailer, and basically put him in business. Um, so you can understand when they take care of their people like that, it impresses everybody. <clears throat> Chicago 17 was also the first year that Corona beer was introduced into America and uh, Corona had some interesting support, including giving the crew several cases of beer every day. <clears throat> and that was the first time Corona came into America and sponsored the Western section of the tour. 17 was a US tour. It involved three trucks worth of equipment. Now, although Chicago has sold probably in the top five or six bands number of albums in history they have uh, been able to stay out as much as a year at a time which is a long tour but it's also a productive tour from the standpoint of the crew <clears throat> to give you some perspective Prince toured with 12 tractor trailers Motley Crue toured with 12 ACDC at one time toured with 12 as well. Ronnie James Dio toured with five. Um, Hank Williams Jr. toured with four. After the early 80s, a lot of bands got into carrying set and props and wardrobe, which was considered uh, extra before that time. And a uh, three truck tour is not a bare bones tour, but it's an essentials tour with one truck probably having lighting, trussing, and rigging the motors that pull the lights and sound up in the air. The second truck would be primarily a sound truck with their frames that they use to carry their speakers into the air. And the third truck would be band gear, clothing, and sometimes dressing room furniture is in the mix and sometimes it's not. Really depends on how much clothing changes a band would do. So whereas Prince might have several wardrobe people, including Eileen, um, and Motley might have a couple, the uh, Chicago guys dressed for the evening so there wasn't a whole lot of wardrobe. I was lucky enough one night at crew meal to ask them how they enjoyed opening for Jimi Hendrix. I'd seen them in Charlotte opening for Hendrix back when they were still called CTA, Chicago Transit Authority. This caused quite a commotion because it turned out they had only opened for Hendrix three times. They had considered it one of the high points of their musical career. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, like magnets, the entire band encircled me and started asking me questions about where I saw them, 
and so forth. Uh, so it's interesting to see the band magically transformed into fans for other bands, but it's, it's a matter of respect, and they were a very respectful group of people. I have always enjoyed their music, and enjoying music of a band you're working for is not common. I've worked with some, shall we say, heavy metal artists and uh, jazz artists and just about every kind of music, country, r and I've worked with everybody from Rick James to Crystal Gale and from Motley Crue to Frank Sinatra over the years. So it's a mixed, mixed up bunch of people you end up working with when you work freelance. And Chicago was just a heck of a bunch of good guys that did a good job, put on good shows, and it was by the first, it was the first tour that Bill Champlin played keyboards on. He was formerly of the Sons of Champlin, which was a somewhat similar band to Chicago. But all in all, Chicago was a class act. Can't say enough about it.